Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte. And here is your news now. Last week, a representative from Catholic Relief Services came to Grace Hall to talk about his first-hand experiences of the Arab Spring and how countries in the Middle East and North Africa are changing. Let's go to Jimmy with more. Regional Director for CRS and Europe in the Middle East, Mark Schnellbacher, came to Cabrini on October 26th to share his experiences and insights on what the role of non-governmental organizations may be in the Middle East going forward, as well as how people in countries such as Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia are transitioning from being subjects to citizens. What we have now, I would say, I don't I don't think we call it democracy. Um, I think the best, we could, the most accurate description at this stage of the game, including with what happened in, in Tunisia the other day, uh, is probably something like pluralist competition. They're very much right now, one of the most exciting things that's happening in the Middle East right now are the discussions, debates, and arguments that are going on among citizens of different countries about what it means to be a citizen. During the second half of the presentation, four members of Cabrini's faculty took to the stage for a panel-style discussion of their thoughts on the Arab Spring. So historically, 30 years ago, you had this kind of negative perception of the Middle East, the Arab world, the Islamic world. And the idea of the Arab Spring might seem to suggest that we are turning a corner there, that this is a positive representation. You take a dictator out, and it's a rush for power to fill that vacuum. Now, uh, we don't know how it's going to turn out. But one thing we can learn from analyzing our own system of politics and economics is that it demands something that we might call a democratic personality, something that we take for granted. If we don't understand what a democratic personality is for us, how are we going to understand and appreciate what a democratic personality might mean in the Middle East? I was really reflecting on that notion about these young people in the Middle East because I also, as I think Dr. Wright said, you shouldn't have a stereotype that, oh, that's like a Muslim running around, you know what I mean? They all, have, they all act the same way and they all think the same way because, indeed, they have their own vernacular religion. They are, all, they are interpreting what Islam is for themselves and perhaps what we're seeing that interpretation of their religion is really causing the political changes in a really significant and important way. For Location, I'm Jimmy Kroll. Location went to the first annual Cabrini Halloween Havoc last Thursday night. Let's see what the Vice President of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee, Ryan McDowell, had to say about the event. Halloween Havoc is really, we're trying to um, bring back what was Cap tip -off. I'm a senior when I was a freshman, they had cap tip off. It's kind of just like a humongous pep rally um, going into the basketball season because that's our big school year. Um, that's what gets the most fans come out with all the like, and whatnot. But um, really, it's, the whole goal is just to try to increase some school spirit, um, get some pride in the athletic programs because they do really well. Um, not everyone's a Um, I mean, it's going to get better every year. It's just a starting point. Um, I hope it 
get it off the ground. I'm Beatrice McQuiston from Location. Now back to the news desk. Cabrini students had their own Halloween plans. What do you think they were up to? What I did for Halloween, I went to the booby dance that was held by the Cancer Society on campus, and I was an avatar from the movie, the, um, the Avatar, with, you know, like the blue people and stuff. So I was one of them. I was Jake Sully, I guess you could say. But that's what I did for Halloween. I went home and took my little brother out, and I was Superman. I went to the booby dance as a nerd. For Halloween, I was the Green Power Ranger. Went trick-or-treating. Bank of America is dropping its plan for a $5 fee for the use of debit cards the Wall Street Journal reported Tuesday. The criticized plan would have gone into effect next year in response to the Dodd-Frank financial overhaul bill that cut the amount of banks could charge for debit card transactions. And that was your trip around the block. Now here's Leah with your top stories from across the nation. Thanks, Allie. After the wave of civil arrest that swept the globe over the past year, the Department of Homeland Security is stepping up its efforts in monitoring Twitter and other social networks to thwart any sign of social disruption inside the United States. The U.S. government is seeking a plan on how to deal with an Arab Spring-like uprising. MF Global Holdings, a securities firm, is seeking bankruptcy protection one week after reporting its biggest ever quarterly loss. The firm, run by former New Jersey governor and Goldman Sachs, Head, John Corzine admitted to using clients' money as it's found itself in financial troubles. The FBI is expected to investigate to see if the firm violated criminal laws. Earlier this week, the Republican-led House approved a resolution to reaffirm the slogan, In God We Trust, as the country's motto. The resolution encourages the public display of the motto in all public buildings, public schools, and other government institutions. And that was your trip across the nation, and now let's jump to Ali for your trip around the world. Julian Assange, the mastermind behind the WikiLeaks, lost his appeal to stay in the United Kingdom and will be extradited to Sweden to face trial over alleged rape and sexual molestation charges. Earlier this week, two high court judges have ruled that his arrest warrant will stand therefore legally should return to Sweden in the next couple of weeks. Earlier this week, the Israeli military was authorized to take all necessary steps to stop the barrage of rocket fire coming from Gaza as Egypt is working on their treaty with Israel. The authorization is in accordance to the severity of the recent Palestinian attacks and responses would be based on an attack. This comes only days after Palestine was granted membership to the United Nations cultural body UNESCO. A Boeing airliner carrying 231 people from the U.S. landed on its belly earlier this week in Warsaw after its landing gear failed to open. The fortunate landing of the Polish Slot Airlines flight, which came from Newark, New Jersey, also was a huge relief for the country that has suffered multiple aviation disasters in recent years. No one was hurt in the incident. And that was your trip around the world. Now here is Jimmy with this week's Tech Connection. Thanks, Allie. Apple is changing how customers buy products in the retail stores worldwide starting November 3rd. According to Boy Junior's report, you will be able to order something online and have it sent to any Apple store for pickup. In-store items will be available for pickup in about 12 minutes. Why the 12 minutes? This will provide the system enough time to send the order to the store and allow Apple retail employees to set aside items for pickup. Customers will be able to skip lines and simply have to sign for them and leave. For build to order, engraved devices, or other out of stock items, Apple will ship the items to your local Apple store for free. Customers will receive a pickup date and a push notification to their iPhone app that will let them know when it has arrived. Again, 12 minutes from when the push notification appears, the order will be ready for pickup. Apple expects the majority of customers will eventually use in store pickup for buying products. During the month of October, the end of an era began. According to Arts Technica, for the first time in almost a decade, Internet Explorer's share of global browser usage dropped below 50%. Many users have switched to Google's Chrome browser and Firefox in the past few years, resulting in IE's decline. Microsoft's browser first achieved a majority share in roughly 1998 or 1999. It reached its peak of about 95% share in 2004 and has been declining ever since. That's all the time I have for now. I will stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Allie and Leah. 
Thanks, Jimmy. Now let's catch up with Danielle Alio for this week's Tip of the Week. Thanks, Leah. This week, my tip has to do with upcoming course selection for the spring semester. It's a good idea to try to work out your schedule as early as possible so there is enough time to figure out exactly what classes you want to register for. Don't just pick a random class because you need a certain amount of credits. Be sure to read the description of the course because you want to be enrolled in a class that you will really enjoy. There's nothing worse than sitting through a class that doesn't hold your interest because trust me, it will be a long semester. You should meet with your advisor about your schedule because they will most likely have a record of your course requirements and they may have an idea of a course that you will really like. You should also make a second schedule just in case you don't get into the original classes you wanted. On the day you're supposed to register, be sure to get up early and register so you're not locked out of that class that has reached capacity. If you don't get a class you really wanted to tr take, try emailing a professor to see if there's any more room in the class. That's your tip of the week. Back to you, Allie. Thanks, Danielle. Now on to Mary-Kate with your weekly sports update. The Cabrini College men's soccer season came to an end this past week in the first round of the tournament with a 3-0 home loss to Gwena Mercy College. Even though there was a 7-1 advantage in corner kicks, the Cavaliers could only put two shots on goal. The Cavaliers finished their season with a 9-10-1 record overall. As for our women's soccer team, they took home a 2-0 victory over the Griffins. Goals were scored by junior Dana Drake and by senior Sammy Thompson. The girls will be traveling to Scranton, PA to face Marywood University in the CSAC semifinals. The Cabrini College field hockey team has won the CSAC title the past two years. They will try to maintain the streak as they host Newman University in semifinals this upcoming week. Baptist Bible College was defeated by our very own Cabrini women's volleyball team 3-0 on October 11th. The Lady Cavs will host Baptist Bible College in the semifinal round of the 2011 CSAC tournament this upcoming week. Saturday CSAC finals will take place on the home court or field of the top remaining seed. We wish our Cabrini Colleges fall sports luck as they continue to semifinals and hopefully making it to the Colonial States Athletic Championship. Be sure to tune in next week for the final results of the CSAC tournament. Thanks, Mary-Kate. Now let's catch up with Melissa Webb for this week's entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. Just two months after spending millions of dollars on a lavish wedding and a huge premiere of a two-part E special and they call it quits, Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys, that is, Kim filed for divorce because of irreconcilable differences. Now in Australia, to launch a new handbag collection, Kim felt that she had to set the record straight since there are so many rumors that the wedding was just a publicity stunt. According to E in her latest blog post, she expressed that she married for love, but may have rushed into it too soon. She just had to steal the shine away from her brother, Rob Kardashian, who just performed his best performance on Dancing with the Stars the other night. While many agree that he is a better dancer than she was, E caught up with him behind stage and he let them know that he is behind his sister no matter what decision she makes. Rihanna canceled this concert in Sweden due to a bad case of the flu and was hospitalized. A Glee star, Sharice Pampinko, also canceled a concert in Singapore to go be with her family in the Philippines after a random stabbing of her estranged father. The stars both wrote messages on Twitter letting their fans know what was going on in hopes of them understanding. Look for more entertainment updates next week. I am Melissa Wett. Now back to Leah and Ali. Thanks, Melissa. That's all we have for you this week. Check us out on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Leah Ferrante. And I'm Allie Juder. Have a great week, Cabrini.